This video will introduce you to ALICE, a programming language and development environment designed for beginning programmers. The version of ALICE we will be demonstrating is running on a Windows PC, although versions of ALICE for the Macintosh and Linux PCs will be available shortly. In some places in this VHS video, we have changed the screen resolution to make the text more readable, which causes some elements not to fit nicely on the screen. We apologize. We will begin by playing a completed example of a possible student project. This project is an example of something a beginning student could build as a week-long assignment using the ALICE system. While the project only shows a small subset of what is possible in ALICE, it is intended to give a flavor of what students might build. Objects in ALICE are represented on screen as 3D characters. In early classroom experiments, we have found that beginning students are highly motivated by 3D virtual worlds. This approach encourages them to want to learn more programming constructs so they can build more interesting worlds. To further encourage and motivate students, ALICE allows students to share their completed worlds through the Internet by saving them out as self-contained applets that are viewed via worldwide web pages. To facilitate the transition from the ALICE system to a more traditional programming platform, ALICE can display code with a Java-like syntax. While ALICE makes things highly visible and easy to create, it is not a toy. ALICE programs include methods, functions, variables, parameters, and recursion. Here is an example of a large, complex program built with ALICE. Seniors majoring in computer science at Carnegie Mellon University routinely write 3,000-line programs, such as this one, in ALICE. Now that you have seen what ALICE is capable of, we'll show you how students learn to program with ALICE. We have loaded a world that already contains a few objects. We will now add the skater to this world. Objects in ALICE can be added from an online gallery of objects. In early classroom experience with ALICE, we found that students often browse the gallery for inspiration on what programs to write. In response, we have developed a wide variety of gallery objects, including objects and characters from Japan, ancient Egypt, an amusement park, a city, a beach, a fairy environment, a skateboard park, and others. To add the skater to the current world, we simply drag the skater in and drop her on the ice. The skater is now in the world. We can drag her around the scene to position her. We can also try out the basic methods that the skater knows. These are the same methods that students use in writing programs. By right-clicking on the skater, we can interactively call individual methods on the skater object. Here we see the results of having the skater turn right, one. Experimenting with these methods in the scene allows students to gain a familiarity with the methods in a safe environment. Commands always animate so we can see the skater has just moved up off the screen. To get the skater back, Alice provides an infinite level undo button. A single undo will bring the skater back to where she was. If we click undo again, she will undo the turn. By selecting the skater in the object tree and looking at her animations, we get a list of the things she knows how to do. These are the same methods we invoked earlier using the menu. To make the skater move, we can drag skater move into my first animation. When we drop move, we get a menu to specify the details. We will choose to have the skater move forward one. Now when we play the world, the skater will move forward. Most programming languages include sequential steps, so after the skater moves forward, we will have her turn left one revolution. Now the skater will move forward and then turn. Alice is also well suited to introducing concurrent programming. We have a construct called do together, which executes all of the methods inside it simultaneously. So at the same time as the skater moves forward, we would like her to raise her leg. Now the skater raises her leg while she moves forward. Perhaps we would like to have the skater turn multiple times. We can drag in a loop and put turn inside it. Now we'll have the skater turn three times. 
Now the skater moves forward while she raises her leg and then turns three times. We're going to move the hole so that it is in front of the skater and teach her to fall into the hole if she is on top of it. We need to add an if to the end of our program. In addition to animations, the skater also has some questions that she can ask about the world. One of these is whether she is within a given distance of a target object. We will drag the conditional skater within distance of an object onto the condition of the if and replace it. We want to know whether the skater is within one of the hole. If the skater is within one of the hole, we'll have her move down 10. Since we don't want the skater to turn on top of the ice before she falls in, we'll move the loop so that it is in the else condition. Now the skater skates over the hole and falls in. While the skater moves down, we'd like her to make a splashing sound. If we go back to Ice Skater's animations, we can drag in Play Sound and we'll choose to load Splash.Wave. Now the skater falls through the ice and splashes as we expect. For the safety of the skater, we'll now move the hole out of her way so that we can teach her to skate to a cone and circle around it. For that, we'll want to create a new method that we'll call Skate Around. The first thing we want the skater to do is face a cone. So we'll drag in Skater Point At and choose Red Cone. Then we want her to skate to the cone, so we'll tell her to move forward one. At the end of my first animation, we'll have the skater circle around the red cone by dragging the Skate Around method tile into the end of my first animation. But we want her to move the distance to the cone rather than just one, so we'll replace one with the distance to the red cone from skater's questions. Now when we play the world, the skater will move forward, turn three times, and then skate up to the red cone. But she finishes standing inside the red cone, so we need to make her stop a little bit sooner and then skate a circle around the red cone. We have some arithmetic questions, so rather than having the skater move all the way to the red cone, we can have her move the distance to the red cone minus two. Now we'll have the skater turn right a quarter and then left one. When she turns left, we'll have her turn as seen by the red cone, which allows her to turn around the red cone center. Now the skater will move forward, turn three times, skate up to the red cone, and skate in a circle around it. We would like to generalize skate around so that it works for any object in the world. To do this, we will create a new parameter, what, for skate around, using the create parameter button. We now have a what tile. We can drag and drop it on top of all the red cones and skate around. Now the skater will skate around whatever object we pass to the method. In my first animation, we'll tell the skater to skate around the blue cone. She goes forward, turns three times, and then skates around the blue cone. We have a list of cones in the world. It is easy to create lists of objects, strings, numbers, etc. We can now use this list to have the ice skater skate around each of the cones in turn. We can drag in for all and have the skater skate around each of the cones in the list of cones. Now when we play the world, the skater moves forward, turns three times, and then skates around the red cone, the white cone, and the blue cone. At this point, you have seen most of the constructs in a CS0 programming class in a procedural style. We have had to type only twice to name a method and a parameter, and it is impossible to make syntax errors. This allows beginning students to concentrate on understanding the control structures and logic of programming. 
Alice still contains a rigid syntax that transfers well to other languages. The user just can't make syntax errors. Alice also supports event-based programming, which we will now give you a taste of. We can add a new behavior so that when the mouse is clicked on an object in the world, the skater will skate around that object. To add this behavior, we click on Create New World Behavior and choose When Mouse is Clicked on Something. Then we'll drag Skate Around from My First Animation to the mouse click Behavior and have the skater skate around what was clicked on. We don't need the for all anymore. We can also create a new world behavior that allows us to move objects in the world, such as the cones in the hole. Finally, we'd like to add a conditional event. We'll create a while something is true behavior. Now we can drag the condition that the skater is within one of the hold from my first animation and replace the condition in the behavior. We can also drag the do together so that when the skater is within one of the hole, she will move down and make the splash sound. Now when we play the world, we can click on cones and the skater will skate to them. If we click on the hole, she will skate around the hole. And if the skater encounters the hole, she'll immediately fall into it. We have now shown you how to add objects into worlds, create methods that take parameters, and trigger methods with different events. We hope you have a feel for how worlds are built in Alice and the kinds of things users can build with Alice.